All right. Thank you. I am starting the recording. So in case you miss any of the content today, you are welcome to watch the recording afterwards, which we will place on our Facebook page as well as on our YouTube page. Uh, we'll do our best to share that with you. Uh, we'll also share notes. Today's webinar is very interactive and very much about your money. So if you have a notebook and a pen handy, I can highly recommend it. Um, in fact, if you have a little notebook that might be your money journal for 2024. I think that could be a really great idea. So grab your pen and paper, grab everything that you need, make sure that um, you know the, the, the kids are taken care of, that you can focus fully. This is going to be a very productive lunch hour. You are going to learn a lot of skills, tips and tricks. Uh, and I'm, I'm absolutely uh, delighted to introduce you to my guest speaker today, Nikki Edwards. So Nikki is a colleague and a friend and a someone who's been on a money journey herself and now is a bit of a money master. So welcome to our webinar called Me and My Money, My Journey to Financial Freedom. This webinar is a, a collaboration between Taking Care of Business and Grow ECD. Taking Care of Business and Grow ECD are part of one group uh, of social enterprises and nonprofits company that focuses on equipping people to take responsibility and become independent, both financially and socially free. Taking Care of Business works with unemployed individuals across the country to help them become self-employed primarily in the circular economy. And one of the, the amazing programs that they teach is called Me and My Money, which is really one of the life-changing training programs. Grow ECD, for those of you who don't know us, we work with ECD businesses to help ECD business owners operate their preschools more sustainably while focusing on improving the quality of education that we deliver. Our purposes are united. TCB, the purpose for TCB is to empower the people raising the next generation and Grow ECD, we focus on empowering the people educating the next generation. So it really is a, it's a match made in heaven. And today we will be sharing the Taking Care of Business Me and My Money course with you in a little bit more detail. We'll call it a masterclass. It's usually a full day course, uh, which Nikki and her team uh, train. And today Nikki is giving us a little, little masterclass. Um, Nikki, you'll be helping us focus a little bit specifically on our personal finances. And I'll be popping in with a few tips specifically around managing your small businesses finances. So have this perspective. Uh, throughout, wow. you are welcome to add your comments in the chat, ask questions, and we'll do our best to make sure we answer them. Let me just see in the chat, we have so many more welcomes. Hi, Portia from Treasured Offspring in Soweto. I know you. Hi, Gail. Hello, Lucky. Hello, Faranaz. Oh, it's so lovely to see many faces that I recognize. Now. Nikki, tell Ooh. us, where are we going? So I love this. So welcome, everybody. My name is Nikki Edwards, and you on the Me and My Money Lunchtime Drive. I am so excited to be with you today. And Me and My Money is a deep, emotive, powerful money course that changes habits. You know, no longer can we talk about the, oh, shame, I don't have money. Oh, you know, I don't know how to feed my family. I am just surviving. We don't want people to survive anymore. We want human beings to thrive and take ownership of their financial destiny, you know? And th the reality is we need to look in the mirror at the end of the day. So freedom is coming. So I don't know about you, but I know that Sarafina song. Do you know that Sarafina song, everyone? That goes, freedom is coming tomorrow. It's a beautiful song. And today it is about freedom is coming. It's in the year and it is in the now. But the most of important thing, if we want financial journey, you need to look in the mirror. 
You need to look at yourself in the mirror and really be honest and truthful about your financial situation. What's the point of wearing a mask? What's the point of being like a little giraffe and keeping your head in the sand and not seeing what is going on? So we want, we want financial eagles that strong, that look up, that look at the big picture, and we are going to start clipping your little chicken wings because we want you to look up. So when you look in the mirror, there's a few questions that I really want you to ask yourself. And the first one is, because you know money is, we don't want to talk about money. I've been married for 31 years. Isn't that a long time? I need a naughty badge. But my husband says, he need a naughty badge. But I've been married for, for 31 good years as well as 31 bad years. Many a times, I was going to strangle my husband because they had no cooking clue of how to manage our household finances and we came into disarray. But you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself the questions, what bad habits have I fallen into? Mm -hmm. you got to address the elephant in the room and that is with yourself. And the second question is, what is my current financial situation? Why am I spending money that I do not have. And most importantly, how does my money make me feel? Is there an emotion that I'm trying to avoid? Why are you blindly just spending money? Why are you avoiding certain things in your life? What is that emotion? A lot of us feel that, you know, I've been rejected or abandoned or I grew up poor. So I just want, I just want things. I'm going to buy things because it makes me feel fantastic. But then we get ourselves into a situation. It gives you the soothing effect. But then after that, it gives you not a nice feeling when you're looking at the real, at the real person standing in front of you that's in the mirror. And we all have a money story. No matter our gender, no matter our race, no matter where we've been grown up in, we all have a money story that we've inherited. The good money story and a bad money story that we've inherited from our parents. So I want you to think for a moment, right? Think about when you were growing up as a young child. Go back into that home in your formative years. Maybe you didn't even grow up with your parents and you grew up with your grandparents or your gogos or aunts and uncles. But in the home, in your formative years, think about who was reckless, who was stingy, who was the saver in, in that family. Think about that because we all have a money personality that has come through our extended family and that has come through our culture. We don't often think about these habits. We don't. But we do things just because it is the way it was done before. So you know what? I was watching this ad on TV and there was this mom standing with her daughter and she's preparing this delicious lamb of roast. She's going to roast it. But what she did is, you know, there's the roast leg of lamb and the leg per piece, she cuts it off. And I mean, that piece is so gender uh, tender and juicy and succulent. And she cuts it off. And the, and the daughter said, mom, why are you cutting off this piece? of meat and the mom says i don't know go and ask your grandmother she goes to the grandmother and she asks the grandmother and she asks the same question and the grandmother says i don't know ask your great grandmother she goes to the great grandmother and she said why did you cut off this piece at the end of the of the leg of lamb and the great grandmother said those years when we were growing up, the ovens were this tiny. The leg of lamb could not fit into the oven. So we had to cut it off. Bible. And we just carry on from generation to generation. And the reality is bad money habits keep us trapped in debt and can cause us trapped in the cycle of poverty. So with these money relationships and habits that we have inherited, it can be a blocker that is stopping you from future financial breakthrough at the end. It causes you to be stuck. And you know what we do is we've got to break the cycle of poverty. It's in our mind because reality is we've got enough in our hands to get us out of the cycle of poverty. And this generational, it's generational challenges that we need to face, this financial generational challenges that has perpetuated 
the behavior that you have now that has come from generation to generation, you need to empower that next generation. And this is why you're here today. You know, so for me in my family, I grew up in Mitchell's play. I grew up poor, you know, but I also grew up in a loving relation, family relationship where my mom was a single, uh, she was a single child. She was an only child. So she grew up always getting everything. You know, and she just wanted everything. And my dad was the one that was always just managing to keep us happy. And he was going to do everything to keep his five girls and one son just happy. You know, but what was also happening is, is that we were just perpetuating the cycle over and over again. And, you know, as I started growing up and I went to and I found a job and I was earning good money, I also fell into the trap of I just want things all the time. Because you know what? You grew up, you know, you grew up in Mitchell's Plain, you grew up poor. I wanted things for myself. So I also got myself into financial difficulties. Those years, it was the checkbook where you had the checkbook that would come, that we would write out the check just for 20 rand, we'd write out a check and you forget actually when you cash in a check or you use a check, there's fees related to that. We were, I was so uneducated and made so many mistakes. And eventually I got to the point where I was in deep, deep trouble, you know, and I had to get out of that. And when I got married, I took that money behavior. My husband also just grew up with no money discipline. And that two of us came together and a lot of sparks were fired. But, you know, eventually we navigated through this and we'll talk later on about this as well. But one of the things, as my parents grew older, and as you know, the, the, the pension grant is nothing. You can't survive on it. They didn't have a retirement fund because there was no money to save. And, um, and they did the best, you know, and I love them for it. But you know what was beginning to happen is that more of our money, my household money, was going to support my elderly parents and we, we used to give money every week and then two days later you know you're in that situation what happens is they knock on the door they phone you they ran out of money they need food they need electricity they need all sorts of things and it also caused a lot of friction in my marriage as well you know because my husband's like we're working so hard and you're just supporting your mother your your parents his parents have passed on so it was always just my parents and eventually through this course that I also did, I also did the Mima Money course, and I realized that I needed to put financial boundaries in place with my parents. Mm. And that was a journey that was painful in the beginning, because you know what, but we're there to help our parents. It was painful, but we put the boundaries in place, we had the conversations, and over time it became easier, and we put strategies in place so that they are supported and helped, but we are also doing okay. So you need to think about your families and you need to think about boundaries you've got to put in place. So I sang the song to you, freedom is coming. But there's a second line that says, get ready and prepare for your freedom to come. And I love that line because, you know, we, don't, we sing the song so happily and it says, get ready and prepare for your freedom to come. So how do we get ready if we want financial freedom in our lives if we want a financial breakthrough in our minds we have to put certain things in place right and what are those things here are some ideas that I want you to ponder about and I hope you've got your notebook with you your financial journey you're gonna write there this is my financial journey on my way to financial freedom so what do what are the first things you need to do? The most important thing is have a family meeting. You cannot do that alone. It takes a village. Have a family meeting and you say, we are on this journey to financial freedom. We want to see our savings grow. We want to see our debt come down. But we need to start cutting back on expenses. And it's not going to be for too long. You know what? If your child's at school, get them an energy bottle. You don't have to buy the energy. Buy Oros. Top it up with water. There's more water than Oros in there in any case. And it will cost you nothing. Where energy will cost you now about 22 rand. Simple things we can do to start cutting back. And then you save that money. You need to create a budget every single month. I love it when people say to me, Nikki, I have a budget. And then I ask them the question, do you stick to your budget? And they go, 
no, I don't stick to my budget. So they feel so excited that they can write it down, but they're falling into the habits and they don't stick to the budget. You need to set boundaries with family and friends. The person that has given you electricity, that has given you bread money, you need to make a plan, but you cannot fall into that cycle of giving constantly. And you know what? Sometimes we give. Let me tell you, sometimes we give because we want to be validated. We want to feel loved. We don't want to be rejected. And then we set ourselves up for failure in those situations. You've got to persevere. There is no quick fix when it comes to budgeting, saving money, and getting out of debt. This is your roadmap journey. It's starting today. Freedom is here. It is now. It is today. I love the chats. Thank you. It's beautiful. You know what? We've got to change our habits to the drinkers, to the smokers, to the snackers to the shopping people, to the impulsive and compulsive buyers. You are addicted. It's an addiction that you have that you're going to stop now because we're going to teach you how to track every cent that comes out of your wallet. And then what's important as well is I like to stop caring about other, others' opinions about yourself and your family and start making good choices for you and your family. We are so worried about, oh, wow, look at Mrs. Jones and Mr. Jones. You have not walked in their shoes. You do not know what sacrifices they have made for their families. We always look at challenges. We say, what's wrong with the world? If you hold up your arm, we always have all these problems here. But look at your hand. Look at my hand. There is five, one, two, three, four, five solutions to any problem. Choose wisely. That is what you need to do. Avoid emotional spending. Oh my goodness. I can't even say this is just to females. It's not even. I've seen so many men in this workshop that says, you know, Nikki, I go through this little phase in my life and I spend recklessly and I also am an emotional person because you, we human beings. Yes, we all have emotions. And especially for women, when it's that time of the month, we're quick to run. I need a piece of cake just for comfort and to soothe myself. Monitor how you feel during the course of the month and write those things down so that you don't fall into the trap of emotional binging. Okay, be patient. Savings, oh my gosh, I want you to start saving. Saving is beautiful. You need to be disciplined to save. Even if you've got debt, people say to me, but I've got debt, I can't save. Yes, even if you have debt, you're going to take some money and you're going to start saving. it. Saving is actually so important. You need to save before you start paying your debt. Did you know that? Because saving must become infectious. Think of COVID. We all were infected with the virus. So savings must be infectious. It must grow. And that's what we want. But it comes with perseverance. It comes with discipline. And then start planning for the future. You know what? We, My parents, they didn't have a retirement fund. The little pension my dad got when he worked at the hospital as a driver, sustained his little six children, you know, and he put us through school with that. And he did the best he could. But they had nothing to fall back on and we had to step in as siblings at the end of the day this it's never too late to save at the end of the day so freedom is here and it's now so get ready and prepare and make sure that you use these helpful tips in the future and we all have feelings about money and then the next page uh, can you see all these smiley faces and the sad faces hey eh? So I want you to think about how are you feeling about your financial situation right now? So that you've got little icons. You see, you can give me, oh, you can give little smiley faces or sad faces. Do you have that? Or in the chat, in the chat, how does your money make you feel right now? So put that down. Are you feeling happy Oh, thank you for your honesty. And be honest. Remember, you're looking at yourself in the mirror. This is you. You're answering for you. Thank you for that. You're feeling stressed. You're feeling scared. You are feeling hurt. 
I know somebody who wanted to commit suicide because there was there was identity fraud um, that took her out for millions. You know, some people are feeling sick about their financial situation now. Some people just want to run away. They are sad. They are angry. They're depressed. Some have hope, which is lovely. Some wants to rob a bank. And sometimes we feel ashamed. And sometimes we feel insecure. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your, your smiley faces. And we acknowledge that. And the reality is we are in a state, you know what, of anxiety, financial anxiety. And we stress because we are not surviving. We're living from hand to mouth every single day. We are not thriving. We are just surviving. And it's time that we understand the emotions that are behind all of the way we are feeling. That's why it's important for you to identify this, all of these faces that you are seeing here. What is that and what is causing it? So in your journal, you're going to reflect later on, on the smile, on the faces that you selected. And you're going to write down, why is it making you feel that way? And list Everything from people to family to money to the area you live in. Everything, because everything in life is about money at the end of the day. So our emotions are triggered. You know, the one with the identity theft, somebody got hold of our, her ID and they took her to the cleaners. They opened bank accounts. They made debt. They bought cars. It was so sad. And this person really wanted to commit suicide. You also need to be aware of those people in your life that are dragging you down to their level as well. It is important. You know, the thing is this, we go through life with a blindfold on, you know? And if you don't know what the picture is, then you cannot change it. If you don't know the reality of how much money is coming in and how much money is going out, you will forever be this ostrich with the sand, with your head in the sand. We need You need to look up. You need to take it out. You need to face your current reality if you want to move forward. It is painful. It's emotional. But breakthrough comes when we're in that situation of out of comfort and when we are vulnerable. Breakthrough will come, but it starts with being honest. So, you know, when we, you, one sorry, of the most. Sorry, may I just interrupt you for one second? Thank you so much. Um, it's it's really for me so interesting that you're starting with how we feel about money, because when we talk about money, um, many of us want to dive in immediately to in solution mode. Yes, but we yeah. have to reflect and say why we got there. So when you said we all have a money story, for example, yeah. um, my personality, I always like, I want to look good. I want people to think she's she's in control. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm not in control, you know, I'm scared or I'm afraid or I'm uncertain. And that made yeah. me buy things to look good. Yeah. But yeah. like you were saying is once you start realizing that your money decisions affect you and your family. Why yes. are we so always caring about what other people think, about what we yeah. are wearing or doing? Yeah. So this is yeah. very, very helpful. And yeah. thank you to everybody for sharing their, their comments. Okay, next. And it's, and it's also, and it's also Helene, that fear, the, the fear of rejection, yes. you know, that comes in. I, yes. I want to be loved. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my children want Nike tackies. I really yes. can't afford it, but I don't want to look like this mom who cannot provide for Correct. my family. My son you know, wants a cell phone. And and I'm yes. like, no, you, you yes. can't get a cell phone. And and not only can we not afford it, I don't even want you on a phone. You know, so it's all about the pressure that you yes. feel. Mm. exactly and and i love it when people also say they're happy and there's some people that just know that they've come through the hard knots of life they've gone through the valleys they've climbed the mountains they swam through crocodile infested waters yeah. basically to get there where they are so well done to you guys as well yeah. you know but always check your emotions when it comes to money because it has a direct link 
on your financial future. And you know, like I said to you, if you don't know what that picture is, then you cannot change it. We go through life with this blindfold on. It's not a physical blindfold. It's an unconscious blindfold that we go through life and we make the same mistakes over and over again. We don't want to be rejected. So what do we do? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get into debt and buy my family or this. I'm going to hang out with these friends because they always have it together and I don't have it together. So I'm just going to hang out with them and I get myself into that cycle of debt. And again, you know, so it's time that we take the blindfold off. And guess what? The situation is still going to be scary, but your eyes are open. And there is help and there's a and there's a support. And you know, we're gonna give you the tools to take you through it so that you can come out stronger financially on the other side. So take that blindfold off. And the first thing that we do need to do is we need to draw up a budget. You know, because that is the first and the most important thing. And let's have a look at certain critical items that we need to when it comes to budgeting. So to make doing our budget easier, there's a four step system that we need to look at. And step number one is you need to identify the difference between a need and a want. So I love this. You know, I, I don't know about you, but there was an ad on TV, a net bank ad on TV a while ago. And, and the guy's name was Eugene, and he had this little ad up that says, but I but I want to need it. I want to need it. Because we are like that as human beings, you know. And a need is something that we have to spend money on each month. This is for survival. A want is something that we spend money on but it isn't critical to our everyday survival. Can you see what I'm saying? So you, as you start your budget, it's important to look at what are the needs, what are the most important things that I need. If I don't pay my rent or my bond, there's going to be consequences to that, right? If I need to get to work and I am not making allowance in my bad budget for my transport, I'm going to and I come late, or I don't go to work, I'm absent, there's consequences to that. So can you see how this play in? And literally, you can have a want, but you can you can get to a want eventually, once you know I've done my budget, oh, there is a little bit of money left. I want to reward myself, but it doesn't have to be extravagant. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that you know exactly what are your needs, and that's the most important thing. And then secondary, what is a want? And you can decide that for yourself. And then the second step that we need to look at is that we need to identify our annual expenses, our wants of expenses, and our unexpected emergencies. And this is very, very crucial. And this is where people make a big mistake. And we're going to take you through what is annual expenses. And uh, annual wants of expenses can be things such as there's a big birthday celebration. You know that there is. There is a, a Christmas or Eid at the end of the year. There's a holiday season. You know, um, TV license. Who of you pay TV license? I do. It's only 265 rand. If you divide that by 12 months, it's about, what, 24 rand, 26 rand a month, you know, at the end of the day. So your annual expenses is very, very important. There you can see, there are some of our annual expenses that we have. December. Oh, Vicky, my, I, mine, mine that I always forget about is my car license. And then when I get oh. the message, my car license is expired, Ooh, then I'm... I'm depressed because now I have to find 500 rand somewhere. So what you're saying is if I took 500 rand and yes. divide it by 12, I'm going to do that. Because yes, 12 months. Divide by 12. Yeah. I need to save 42 rand a month somewhere in a savings. Every month. single month. Yes. 
-hmm. And Eileen, what I want you to do and others to do, you actually need to have an annual account. You know, I'm just going to use Capitec Bank and please don't get me wrong. I'm not a punting Capitec Bank. Um, I've got an, uh, that I've got a Capitec account and I save in there. But linked to that account is also my annual expenses. So like Aileen was saying, there's four of us in my household. Each one of us have got a car. That's four licenses. That's 500 times four is 2,000 rand. So what is 2,000 rand divide, divide by 12 months, Aileen? How much money do I have to put away faithfully every month? 165. I've got to put away 165 rand every month into my annual expenses for my car. So when it comes, my car license renewal is always in July for all of us. We planned it together. So when it comes to July, easy peasy, I have money to go and pay for a car license. I don't have to stress. I don't have to worry. Where am I going to get the money from? Because if your car license is not renewed and the traffic cop, they will find you to up to 2,000 rand. I don't have resources for a recklessness like that. So I need to think and I need to make the right choice. Mm -hmm. So your annual expenses is important. January, a lot of us are mothers. I'm a mother. When my children were much younger, I planned for January especially because, number one, it's school fees, it's school uniforms, it's school transport, it's school lunch boxes. And you know what I did? Come at October, every year, I used to go and lay by my children's school uniforms because then what happens is the price is locked in because come January, the prices for school uniforms and school stationery has gone up. So you locked in and I have October, November, December, January, I go and fetch your clothes. And obviously I'm taking it a size bigger because I don't want the stuff to be small. Sometimes even two sizes bigger. I can hem it. That's fine. So we've got to start thinking smartly. End of the year. People love to go away and spend a lot of money at the end of the year. Um, and you know what? We need to plan for that because not everybody gets a bonus or 13 check at the end of the year, which means you need to make monthly allowance for that annual expenses. So I, I don't know about you, Helene, or about some of you, but I'm going to give you a lovely secret. I buy Chopra checkers vouch stamps, the stamps every single month. I up it every year by a month. It also helped me with my parents because come December, I give I shop for them. I don't give it to them half. And come January, I keep half and I shop for them and the rest is for me. So come December, we get our little stamping books. And I am now on, listen, I've been doing it for a while. I am now this year on a hundred, uh, 800 rand per month. So I don't know about you. The great you can come with me in December. Mm. I am lucky, but I'm disciplined. I, I've, come, I've, I've put it in my budget as an, an extra expense. It's accountable for that. I can't get it. The We've got one person at, at work that is in control of it, and she only gives it to you in December. I might even be half dead. She will still not give it. Because you know what? That's the time of year. So we need to think Ricky, of ways to make our lives yeah. so much easier. So here's a great example. Thank you. Uh, Alvina has shared such a great little message here. She says, my problem is uh, I, I, me and my granddaughter, we always like to buy a two litre um, every day. Okay. So Alvina, let, I've got my calculator. Let's say a Work two, two litre is about 20 rand. Hey, let's say you buy yeah. a two litre three times a week, only three times a week. And there's 52 weeks. So two litre, three times a week, 52 weeks. 3,120 rand that you are drinking. Yeah. Imagine if you, you know, if you think about needs and wants, what does your granddaughter yeah. need Yeah. versus what does she want? If you could save yeah. that for your granddaughter, you could buy her a yeah. lovely gift for Christmas and have money for Absolutely. her stationery, her, her, her extra things. And then you are really teaching her also while you're doing this, you are teaching your granddaughter about savings. Absolutely. It's a lovely analogy and an exercise to do as well. 
And then with the annual expenses, you know, I also link to my Capitec account. I've got an account for, for, for emergencies. I've also got an emergency fund. So I want you to think about this thing. I've got a savings account. I've got an annual account and an emergency um, account. An emergency is exactly for that. You know, sometimes there's a death and we need to contribute. I had to contribute to my sister's funeral. You know, um, they often say you need to have three times your salary in an emergency fund account, account and you've got to top it up. I don't have that kind of money, but I just make sure that I do put a certain amount away. And then when you use it for the emergency like I use it for my sister's funeral I continue topping it up and make sure that I put that money back and then I continue going on so emergency funds is also important because we do have ex annual um, um, emergency expenses this gives you an idea of what an annual expense look like so like I said to you with the car licenses if you look at July I start every month, you've got to put that away. So I've got a car license that I put away. I put my shop right, my checker stamps, that's 800 rand. So in January, I've got 165 for my car license plus 800 rand plus I make a cash allowance in December. So I kind of also put like an additional 500 rand away. So then you add up your 165 Helene plus my 800 rand plus my cash of 500 rand what do for my emergencies what what is my monthly expenses you are saving and putting away 1465 rand a month so that you can come into my annual your, account into yeah. your annual account annual yeah. account yeah so can i hope this helps you because this is so important so for the big ticket items maybe there's a you've got somebody's 40th 50th 60th birthday party your child needs to go to initiation Think about the big ticket items that you want to start putting into your annual expenses. Your annual expenses, not your monthly expenses. And you, you work it out here. You divide it by 12 and you put make sure that that money you put away and it's easy peasy. You're going to smile when you pay for that particular item. The third thing we need to look at is we need to record our monthly income and our expenses and our debt repayment. Okay, this is important. Make sure that you, you that the useful strategy that we have, that, you know, many people, they money, tell them where to go. We want you to start telling your money where it needs to go. And that's why recording your money is so, so important. It involves the different categories. So if you look at that right now, okay, so your your green is is the fifth, that is your fifty percent. Can you see that? That is your needs, your food, your housing, your utilities that you'll put down on that budget. Then your savings is important. You need to save for retirement, your emergency fund. You need to save for funerals. You know, sometimes we've got various policies that are saving options. There's stock fell that people save into as well. And then you've got your wants. The wants, you know, that is your eating out here and there, your entertainment and some birthday party presents or parties that you need to attend. So you can see there is now we've got the 50, 30 and the 20 principle that you need to use on a month to month basis. And you also need to come back and analyze your, your expenses to say you need to be your own auditor. That's what I always say to people, you know, and even when it comes to bank statements, please make sure that you know what's going on on your bank statements. Because sometimes there's a 14 rand and a 20 rand year and a this there that you're unaware of what that is for. Now, imagine adding up your 20 rand times 12. What could you have done with that? So you need to also scrutinize your bank statement. And most importantly, this is my favorite, obviously, this is where we start taking the blindfold off and where reality settles in, is that you need to do that monthly budget sheet. Do it with your family. It is so important. Every month you've got to put in what are the monies coming in? What are those? You've got to add up your salary, your partner's salary. If you've got grants, pension, disability, child support, or you're running a small business on the side, what is that? You put that in there. Then you go through every single expense. 
And you need to have the documentation. How much are you spending on your rent, your rates, electricity, cell phone? It's cell phone. Sometimes people still have tel uh, the, the, the telecom lines. You don't need both in your house. All right. So you've got to go through every single thing. You know, so you can, um, she's just saying, where do I put stamps? You can make a category for you under under stamps that you can make as where, well. And Nikki, I've done on my budget. So Nikki, people- I've added in under under other. I've added in under other and I re renamed it Checker Stamps, 800 cool. Rand. That goes and, there. And if people don't know how Checkers and um, Stamps work, can they go to a Checkers, ShopRite Checkers and ask about it? Yeah, go to a ShopRite Checkers stamp and you go ask about it. And they, they have the book. You know, and, and then you can buy the stamps every market. month. And you go to the money market counter. Mm -hmm. money market. Yeah, and you get a book, and you buy your stamps, and you stick it in there. And and at the most important is you need to be accountable if you're doing it yourself. You need to have accountability buddy because you can't be using that stamps during the course of the month. You save so that goes there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm looking and at the in time, and I know that we still have so much to cover. So yes. I just want to make sure we're moving moving through everything fast. And then step number four, again, this is the most important thing where I said you need to become your own auditor. You need to review that budget. Did you stick with it? Did you overspend? Why did you overspend? Where do you need to start cutting back and start making changes as you need and go about with that? So I love this quote that says, there is always hope. If we are prepared to change our behavior, we can change our circumstances. And guess what? The yes. choice is up to you. Yes. And you know what, Nikki? I didn't get into these money troubles in one week. So I'm not going to get out of them in one week. In one week, probably it takes need to, time. I need to, just as I was making the mistakes, now I'm going to keep doing the right thing and I'm going to get out of the, the money hole that I dug for myself. Yes. That <laughs> I got myself my into. And my savings and, and all of that. So... For those of you who are on the call who run preschools, I think a very good point to make at this stage is that there is a difference between your personal budget and your business budget. And when you are running a business, think of the business as, a, an, as an extra person. So if my preschool is called Happy Apple Preschool, Happy Apple is a, is a person. Happy Apple has its own income and expenses, its own budget. And Happy Apple is my boss, right? Because your 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 business is probably your boss, and your that 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 business has to pay you a salary, and you use your salary to set up your personal budget, your personal accounts, and you living off your salary. So keeping your business and your personal finances separate is a crucial starting point if you're running a preschool or any other business. A practical way to do that is make sure you have a separate bank account for your business income and expenses and for your personal income and expenses. Your business should be paying your staff a salary and should be paying you a salary. And then you use all of these me and my money principles to set up your personal budget and you are living off your salary. Then make sure that your business, you have a realistic budget for your business. And that business budget must include any debts that the business has, savings, the business needs to save. So that the business can buy itself the things it needs or wants. Mm. It has fixed costs. It has variable or changing costs and incomes. So if you um, need some support and help with creating a, a budget for your ECD small business, through the Grow ECD app, you can access a free budgeting course that we specifically designed for, for preschools and creches. It is available data free. So you need a bit of data to log in. And once you are logged in, everything is data free. It explains how to budget your income, your expenses, your cash flow, and how to balance your budget. And you'll get a lovely certificate of completion at the end. So I can highly recommend that you do that course to support you as you're working through your personal budget and your so your business's budget. Nikki, let's check the so, time. We have 14 minutes left. Tell us about yes. it. Yes, so debt, oh, debt keeps us stuck in poverty. It keeps us stuck in all emotional things that's going on in our lives. And more than 85% of South Africans are over -debted. Isn't that shocking? And it actually has grown a bit more because of due to COVID, because we all lost jobs and gone on half percent of salaries. 
And you know what is also quite sad is that South Africans, we do not have a culture of savings because we are so trapped in this credit debt. We are buying from the Mashanisa, we buy from the Spaza shop, we, we go into the Mashanisa to borrow money, and it's just a, a chaotic state that we find ourselves in. So both poor and rich people get themselves trapped in debt. And then many South Africans are over indebted, you know, store cards, accounts and aggressive marketing techniques contribute to South African South Africans having a high debt problem. I mean, we you know, you get SMS. I get about five to 10 SMSs or call phone calls every single day offering me credit loans, um, retail accounts. You have to be strong if you want to survive, mm. you know, and un unregistered money lenders are un illegal. All creditors need to be part of the National Credit Act. Masha leases and informal money lenders are not. And guess what? They charge up to 50% interest and people cannot get out of that cycle of debt. There is a maximum interest rate that, that registered lenders can charge. And that's why it's important that they are registered with the National Credit Act. Um, and again, like I said, so many Afri South Africans are over indebted. Let's start this culture where we want to start getting out of debt and saving more. Yeah. So if you have debts, um, absolutely look at which ones have the highest interest rates pay those off first. And if you want to invest in your preschool, so perhaps there is infrastructure that you need, perhaps you are you, you want to invest in a quality curriculum. What we find is centers need to invest in a good quality curriculum and 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 the the right products, the equipment for the classroom and in the training for the teacher to make sure learners are getting the right educational development um, at the right time. If you are ready to invest in that, we call it our small business program. And we've negotiated with a credit provider that, uh, that like us, would like to have impact. So we provided at a fixed interest rate of 5%, which is ridiculously low. And we make sure that we help every ECD center to calculate what they can afford before they even say that they're interested in credit. So if you, are, if you need credit, Good credit can help you grow your business if you're investing in the right thing. If you're taking credit just to pay salaries, then, you, then you're going backwards. If you're taking credit to invest in your business so that you can have more parents paying more frequently, delivering better education results, that's a much better investment. So please think carefully. Now, Nikki was going to talk to you about savings, but I already know what many of you are going to say. Nikki, <laughs> Nikki, you don't understand because once you are a preschool owner, the preschool owners we work with have a heart, they have a heart of gold. We say they have a heart for children and they're head for business. Sometimes they leave that at home because their heart for their community is so big. And yes. what I find is that parents even sometimes exploit center owners because they can see right. that they are doing this for the children of their community. And it is very, very difficult for you to stand up and say that when you provide a good service, it is not illegal for you to get paid for that service. It is okay. It is okay for parents to pay you for taking mm. care of their most important <laughs> possession, their children. So um, Nonte Tuzelo, she was on our ECD accelerator course and she had over 115 learners many of them not paying any school fees. Um, some of her learn, uh, teachers not qualified. She said no resources. This is everything was just confusing for her. Some days she just wanted to give up and close her center down. Only when Gro started working with her did she discover she was actually running at a loss. She was taking money from her family to keep her business going. And um, she was calculating that she was making a loss of 10 and a half thousand rand every month. She's like, I don't even have that money. Where is that coming from? Mm -hmm. So when she did the me and my money course, she did a few things. Number one, she took it back to her family. She had the family meeting, Nikki. They had the family yeah. meeting. And they all decided they're going to cut back on unnecessary expenses. 
every child got a little savings tin. And every time they wanted to spend wow. money on tuck shop, eating out, chips, unnecessary things, they're putting their money into the savings tin. And she's told the children, in December, you could open the savings tin and we can buy a nice gift for you for Christmas. We're going to buy you new shoes for school. All the children are now saving. She says also as an ECD business, she looked at in my business, where can I save? So she is buying better her food now. She's thinking about what the food so that there's not waste. She's making sure staff are not eating or they, you know, the, the school's breakfast, but it's for the children. And she also is thinking about um, minimum wage. Last year, she was taking to the CCMA because she was not paying minimum wage. She had to pay a hefty fine and she had to pay the balance and and it was it was hectic for her so she says she's now very serious about paying minimum wage but she understands that she can't afford it yet so she's working on a staff contract that runs from 1 february to 30 november because in december and january she has only about half the children in that time she works with the um expanded public works program which is operated by her municipality and her government to secure volunteers who will volunteer for free during December and January. And she trains them and teaches them. And in that way, she is saving on two months of salary. Now, shame, her teachers are not getting a salary in December and January. So what are they doing? Nikki, she has explained to them about the accounts and she is helping every teacher when she gets paid to take a portion of her, her salary and save it for December and January. Like she says, it's not a wonderful thing. She would love to pay all her teachers more. But with what she's got now, she's working smart. And oh. I think for that, I give her 10 out of 10. I'm just going to say power to known to because that is powerful sacrifices that she's made. And she's secreting happy hormones. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, saving for retirement is also just as important. You know, things are not looking good in South Africa as we head into retirement. So what are the things that we need to do? But firstly, let's stop making our, ch it our children's problem. It's not our children's problem. Let's not cause such a lot of anxiety and stress in the lives of our children. We're putting all our stuff onto them. It's not fair. Okay, so let's make our retirement our responsibility and of course let's start planning for our retirement not tomorrow remember Sarafina freedom is not coming tomorrow it's here and it's now and just some top tips for savings because it's important to say and thank you Helene and the one that put it in the coke expenses she's saving so much money what did it come to Helene over 3,000 rand exactly. just because of a coke Hey, okay? daily. So start saving now. Don't put it off. I don't care if it's 10 rand, 20 rand, 100 rand. You know what you can afford, but start today. Save in a bank account. Okay. And especially in like your 32 day call accounts where you almost have to apply for your own money to be released, which is great because by the time it gets to that point, you don't even need it anymore. Um, set up a debit order on your savings account. That is the, the, because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. You don't, you just don't see it. And educate yourself about consumer issues and about savings. Also look for high interest. Where is their high interest? You need to be educating yourself. Diverse your savings. You know, just don't keep it in one little egg nest. You've got to have different eggs of savings into your nest. What is going to give you the highest return? and do your homework. It's not for us to tell you where to go. Go to every single bank. If some of you've got access to a financial advisor, go find a, fin a, a financial advisor. And also, women, please save for yourselves. I, I know this, I'm, I'm, like I said, you've been married for so long, but I know of so many women where they've, they've, their partners have literally just dumped them and they sit with zero. So save for yourself, save every day. The 20 rand Coke, the 50 rand um, fruit and stuffies that you buy, the cappuccinos, the little sweeties and chippies. Take that money, do something over the weekend and save that money every day. Cut down on your spending. Can't iterate that more enough. 
It sounds, if it's, <laughs> I like this one, if it sounds too good to be true, huh, it's not. There are so many scams out there. Please don't click on links. Don't give bank details and ID documents and pins away. It's not going to work. There's no quick fix to getting rich, people. Set saving goals. If you don't have a goal, you're never going to achieve it. So what I need you to do, think about what are the same, small, medium, long term. It can be anything from going on holiday at the end of the year to buying a car, all sorts of things, but set that goal. Savings need to be on your monthly budget. No two ways about it. And it is about creating wealth with compound interest. You know, when you pay in your creditors, they charge you interest. But when you are saving, you are getting interest and you are growing your savings. Absolutely. Savings must be what? It must be infectious. All right. Wow. Shu Halit, this has really been a journey, but I have to say that I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And what I would like to offer them as well, and I know Helene spoke to you about the, the financial app, but you've also got that, there's also a spreadsheet if you would like a spreadsheet to track your debt, um, to track your savings, to track your daily expenses and do your budgets and give you lovely graphs. Uh, that's my gift to you. And Aline will make sure that you have access to that. Thanks. Stay focused, stay on this journey, make the sacrifices. It's worth it in the end. Nikki, amen. Thank you, Heli. Amen. Thank you for that. So um, thank you, Nikki, for sharing your time and your wisdom and for just motivating us again to make the this commitment. Juliana, yes, the slides will be shared. So tomorrow, Zoom will send everybody who's joined this meeting an email. And in there, there will be a link to where you can download the slides. And I'll also put the spreadsheet that Nikki was referring to there. You can you can download it. So Everybody who's on the Zoom call, you registered tomorrow, you will get the slides also from Zoom. Um, maybe there's also, so Nikki, thank you so much. If you need to go, we I completely understand. I'm going to spend a few minutes just saying more about how Grow can help you further. So if this is the type of thing that uh, that gets you excited, motivated, and, and gives you vision, Grow really wants to support center owners and teachers to to, to become financially and socially independent and provide excellent education. And you can only provide excellent education if you can afford a good teacher and if you have a good curriculum and if you have the resources you need and so that you can support the learners in your classroom. So these are the two sides of the same, the same Oreo cookie, the same coin. The Me and My Money course is also available as an online course. You can go into the Grow ECD app you can go in there, your teachers go in there, your staff, your cook, your cleaner. If you have the Grow ECD app, register them as a staff member and they can use the Meerkat app to access this course. Imagine if all of you do this course and you support each other to become financially free and work better with your money. Uh, this is also a data free course. So anybody in your team, if you're a center owner or a teacher can do this course online can do it step by step the, um, and these are the apps I was talking about the giraffe app the meerkat app for teachers and the lion app for parents as a center owner when you use the giraffe app which is for free you can manage your business's finances in there keep track of your income and expenses do your administration your enrollments you can download resources um I was speaking about a a, a, a contract of employment, for example, you can download a template on there. So the ECD app, the giraffe app is your one stop shop for supporting you to run your business, your preschool business more professionally. Please reach out to us. Uh, we have a dedicated help desk who can help you on WhatsApp, on email, anytime. These are the free resources you can download from the app. This is a list of the free online training that you can do through the app it includes marketing, budgeting, me and my money, fundraising, teacher development programs, how to run a learner assessment. And then this is the one I really want to encourage you. If you are based in Midrand, Durban, Cape Town or Kuberha, uh, previously PE, then we run an ECD accelerator uh, in these areas. And it's an in-person 
training program over six modules and you only pay 600 rand. It's six full days of working with Grow and other center owners to help you start thinking like a social entrepreneur, take control of your money, run your preschool like a business, and crucially, deliver better quality education that meets the NCF requirements and helps you towards registration and compliance and the best practice as set out by government. So our next accelerator starts in May. And if you book now, you can secure your seat and make sure you're part of that next group. We also have a small business program, which includes all the things that you need in your classroom to deliver quality education, um, from the curriculum to the classroom kit, the teacher and business training, mentorship, registration support, and access to low cost finance if you need that. If you are not in the areas where we have a bit, we have an office, perhaps you're in Mpumalanga, Limpopo, Northwest, or just too far out from our office. If you have equipment in your classroom, but you just need a really good quality curriculum, a daily program that you can implement, you can also subscribe to our online curriculum, which we unlock for you on the app. And this is 40 weeks of themed content, step-by-step -step guides for your teachers to help them ensure that learning is happening through play. Um, and this is an NCF aligned curriculum. You can screenshot this page. This is our app support help desk. If you're struggling in any way with the app or you want more ideas of how you can use the app better, reach out to the help desk on WhatsApp. You can call or you can email. And here are also the contact details for our regional branches. I went through that very fast. I hope you were able to catch all of that, take some screenshots as we go. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I am on info at growecd.org.za for our website. You can find lots of information. All right. Um, let me come back to our main page here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It was so lovely to have you online. Uh, thank you for the questions and for sharing. Money can be such a tricky thing to talk about, but I think that by talking about it with each other and supporting each other, um, it really is motivating to know that it's not just me that sometimes really struggles uh, with my budget and my impulse spending and, and my needs and my wants. So um, I wish you only the best and we pray for amazing success for every ECD center owner and teacher for the year ahead. May it be a blessed and fruitful year and we'll see you at our next webinar.